Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Gavin Ingham, who is in Yorkshire in the UK. How are you doing, Gavin? I'm great, thanks, John. Thank you. Yeah, and Gavin uh, helps to create uh, high-performance teams and individuals using his own methodology, which he developed over 20 years, the I am 10 methodology. And today what we're going to talk about is how to, how to achieve more in the next 90 days and who doesn't want to achieve more in the next 90 days. Let's face it, uh, we're in a new year. It's a new quarter. Well, we're nearly at the end. We're, at the, we're already a month into the new year, which seems crazy, but there you go. Uh, everybody wants to have a better start to, to, to 2022 than um, they probably ended 2021. So let's talk about how to achieve more in the next 90 days. Um, so, so Gavin, what are some of the things that you can do to have that kind of short term focus and really get all your resources and your mindset ready to do the best that you can over the next 90 days? Sure. I, I think one of the, one of the biggest problems that is that people set goals and they set targets, but they don't think through why they're setting them and, and why they're important. And I think you've got to go right the way back. Uh, if I could take you back a little bit and talk about the, the whole kind of high performance uh, situation, because I think to achieve your goals and achieve more in 90 days, what you're effectively trying to do is be a, a high performer. You're trying to improve your performance and raise that performance. And I believe there's three Four. Uh, I've invented a new one recently, actually, but it's a little bit like Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly effective people. And then the eighth one. So there is a fourth, but it doesn't apply here particularly. So the, the, the three cores are conviction, clarity and consistency. And I think when you look at those right now, particularly all of the time, but particularly now, you know, we're in the pandemic, things have changed, things are going to carry on changing for months and months, probably years to come. And it makes high performance very, very difficult. And a lot of people therefore are going around in circles. And if you look at high performers, whether that's a high performing salesperson, or whether it's a sales leader, or whether it's a business owner or a CEO of the largest organization, at the center of what you do, or at the bottom of the pyramid, whichever way you want to look at it, you've got conviction. And conviction is having that, that mindset, isn't it? It's having that, that I can do it, I'm going to do it, I believe in myself. And it's fairly obvious, I think, that you can see a lot of people at the moment are going, can I do it? Yeah. Is it still possible? Uh, should I even be setting big goals right now? Um, so there's this whole set of mental stuff that's got to be sorted out first. Then there's clarity. And clarity is, what should I be doing? Um, you know, what shouldn't I be doing? When should I be doing it? And when shouldn't I be doing it? And of course, again, whew, where's it gone? You know, so many people had their roadmap. The salespeople were coming to work. The sales leaders were running their teams. They were sitting there. The CEO had their business. And all of a sudden, businesses have uh, shut down. People are furloughed. Supply chains are ruined. Sales, people are hiding under their blankets in their houses. Um, so that clarity is gone. And I think if you look at traditional personal mm -hmm. development, personal leadership stuff, it all says, oh, well, you know, use OPM, other people's money or other people's experience. Yeah. But who has been in this situation before, John? I know I haven't. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you don't know who to look at. And then finally, the third piece, which almost seems like an irrelevance at this stage is consistency. So we've all had salespeople, sales leaders in our businesses who had conviction and clarity, and they did it some of the time, but not all of the time. Mm -hmm. And I always say consistency. If people say to me, which is the really big one, I think it's that consistency. Because of course, the enemy of high performance is inconsistency or even chronic inconsistency. So when you bring it back to this 90 days, the 90 yeah. day thing is all about having conviction in what you're setting, having clarity in what you need to do and what you don't need to do, and then consistency in, in taking action on it. And they're the three things that you need to get into play to absolutely nail the next 90 days, no matter where you are or no matter what you're trying to achieve, whether that's massive sales targets, recruiting sales teams, scaling things out, or just improving your relationship with your partner or, yeah, or yeah. getting better at running or whatever it is. Yeah, so it's interesting um, what you said about conviction to begin with, right? Because as you said, in in good times or normal or semi-normal times, right? You know, we we can be pretty good at locking in on something and saying, okay, this is the right thing to do, and I'm I'm going to do it. Uh, and as you said, now we've been thrown completely because we have no ex we have no ex we haven't experienced this before. We don't know what the future holds. Um, however, sometimes I think when you lack that conviction or you're, you know, you're finding it difficult, 
looking back on things that you have achieved in the past and maybe obstacles you've overcome uh, is a good way of reminding yourself that when you do have that conviction, when you are able to place a bet that you can actually deliver. Totally with you. Um, and, and in fact, ironically, the, uh, the each building block splits into three. And, and, and the first one is very much about that. Um, and I call it re, rethinking. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. about rethinking the past and looking for your strengths and your abilities and what's taken you through those difficult times. And then taking what you can learn out of that and taking it into the future. If anybody wants to read more about that, the body of work around appreciative inquiry is, is absolutely fabulous around that. But yeah, it's, it's reminding yourself of, of that scenario and keeping that mindset straight, definitely uh, that appreciation of what you've done. And then that learning you've taken from it is absolutely critical. And of course, as teams, uh, and particularly in difficult times like we've had at the moment, that's often been one of the things that has got lost. Um, you know, people are saying, well, stay motivated and stay focused, but actually uh, people have forgotten what they were good at in the first place. And they've, they've equated that with the results they're getting. And, and, it, and it's a human thing, this. It's not just, you know, we, we often go, oh, it's about high performance, about sales. Mm -hmm. But even you hear, if you watch football, you hear the footballers go out on the pitch. And I, I'm not a massive football fan, but somebody will go out who's been paid, I don't know, you know, millions and millions and mm -hmm. millions of pounds. And they'll say, yeah, if he could just get the ball in the back of the net, it feel a bit better about himself and play more confidently. And you're thinking the guy's paid hundreds of thousands of pounds a week and he's not yeah. confident in himself and he needs the result. And of course, in this moment when nobody's getting results, that conviction, that belief in yourself becomes all that more important because you don't have the results to, to lean back on or you might not have the results to lean back on. Yeah, and it's and it's a, that's a that's a fascinating um, scenario that you just um, outlined there because yeah, I mean if you you know you mentioned the footballer there and and sure in in business it's it's the same I mean people who are very confident in what they were doing are very successful and maybe the pandemic has has completely destroyed the industry they're in they have to pivot or whatever else it is and it's very easy to lose that confidence or or as you said conviction that you have the ability to to see it through so that's why i always think it is good to to review the past and sort of say well actually look i came through this and i came through that and uh and to maybe maybe a part of it is just trusting in yourself mm. i think so i think it is you know you see even in good times you know you sort of uh, sales people and sales leaders and sales organizations and the sales go up and down yeah. and you have those months where you can't put a foot right and those months where you can't put a foot wrong and look there are other things going on as well but oftentimes it is that confidence it is that conviction that comes with that belief that you can't put a foot wrong so one month it's it might only be changing your performance your, your actual actions just slightly but that slightly is just enough for you to be that bit more compelling when you're on the phone or that bit more engaging when you're face to face or that bit more persuasive and then of course that gets better and better and better whereas in the other way when it's going down and you're struggling your mindset is in a completely different place yeah. and you have these complete flat and then and then suddenly magically around the start of the month it all clears and you're all right again so you're right even in good times it's about creating that that consistency of mindset to create that consistency of mm -hmm. performance and that is where most people you know as i said i think you can find people who have conviction and clarity but the consistency i mean anybody who's ever been on a diet will recognize that they're motivated to do it they believe they can do it they have a method they know i mean let's be honest it's eat less eat more healthy and exercise a bit isn't it that's it mm -hmm. um and then um um, and then do it consistently. But it's the consistency piece that kills them. They just can't keep it consistent. And it flips back around because these three all roll yeah. into each other. You know, it's hard to hold conviction unless you don't do the right things because then you're a motivated idiot. Conversely speaking, even if you're doing the right things, if you're not doing them with conviction, then you might as well not be doing them at all. <laughs> so they all just roll all together and, and create this. So you do need to focus on all three, uh, starting with the conviction, then the clarity, then, yeah, then yeah. working on how do you get consistency. And I think the clarity piece is very interesting, right? Because, um, you know, in order to in order to move forward, you need clarity. And people are begging for clarity right now. That's one of the things because there's so much uncertainty. And yep. yes, you can't provide exactly um, a roadmap about what's going to happen in the future because nobody knows. But you can certainly provide clarity around 
what it is you want to achieve over the next 90 days and, and focus on that and communicate that to everybody. And I think in most circumstances, if you communicate, here's what we're going to do over the next 90 days, here's why we're going to do it. Most people will be able to rally around that. And I think most people can get their head around 90 days now, as opposed to if you said, here's what we're going to do over the next two years, people will be like, uh, okay. Yeah, people, people, people are scared to do that at the moment. And I think people underestimate what they can achieve. You're right. I mean, there's all sorts of different people at the moment. Um, there's people who've still got that long-term vision and that 90 days is part of it. But then there's other people just sitting in a, a well of awfulness and they just need to get out of dodge. You know, they need to just set a 90-day goal. Um, you know, a big ambitious one. So what, one of the things I, I get people to do, um, and, and you, you introduced it really, I get people to do a set of exercises around thinking about why they're good and feeling good about themselves. Mm -hmm. And then literally writing down every 90-day goal in, in any area they like that they would like to achieve in the next 90 days. And then just prioritizing themselves and asking themselves, which is the one? Which is the one, such as that if I achieved it, I'd be like, that's brilliant. That's really moved me on in the next 90 days. And then focusing on that one, because I think if you want to achieve extraordinary results, you've got to get singularity of purpose. Mm. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have more than one goal, because, you know, you might, but, but, but quite often it means getting down to one and then asking, well, would that be enough or do I really need two or three? Because I think what often happens is people set off chasing three or four rabbits and of course, they end up catching no rabbits. Um, and you need this, especially for the 90 day things, to just really focus on one clear goal and really commit to it and, and write down something, you know, all the usual goal setting instructions apply, make it ambitious, make it exciting, make it something you believe in, make it something, you know, all of that stuff is really important. But the, the biggest thing is getting it down to that one 90 day goal that's specific and that you're committed to. And that, for whatever reasons, people fail to do and even when you yeah. ask them to do it and write it down and i do this with ceos all the time they come back they go that's my 90 day goal and i go it's not really clear is it i mean <laughs> you achieve it you don't achieve it does anybody really know <laughs> that's yeah. not clear enough because the problem is if you have a, a lack of clarity around the goal then you're gonna have a lack of clarity around the action and of course it's what you do as batman says it's what you do that defines you and so that action particularly now is really really important because I don't, I don't know about you but what i'm seeing is a lot of people desperately playing in a lot of places yeah. to desperately mm -hmm. try and open up whereas what they need is just that absolute focus and people say well what if i get it wrong well that's belief again are you really going to get it wrong use your expertise and your past history yeah. to get but if but but then you measure it and if you're halfway and it's not right and you need to change something then yeah. change something you know yeah. but don't not be specific because you don't know what to be specific about that's not really a yeah. it's not really an excuse that's just yeah. a, setting yourself on a path to uh, achieve nothing yeah and if you get it wrong well then you just learn something anyway so you exactly. just learned that that's not the right thing for you but it's interesting what you what you say there because i do this is something i do believe very strongly in is yeah we live in a very distracted world and we're always about, we, you know, we love to talk about multitasking and all of that. And we become very poor at focusing on one thing. And um, there, there was a, there's an Asian proverb or something about, you know, if the man who chases two monkeys catches neither or something like that, because, you know, clearly if you try to, and it's the same for, for people, like if you chase after too many things at once, you're not going to, you're not going to get any of them. So that whole idea of focus, and I don't know what it is that people really struggle with making a decision and sticking to it and yes obviously if it doesn't work out you change but just that whole process of saying okay i'm going to push everything else aside right now and i'm going to focus we're in a world as well of increasing specialization at the moment yeah. you know the global economy the internet all that sort of thing has allowed people to be to create niches that they would have never been able to create before and the amount of value those people can add into those niches means that if you fail to do that, you're going to struggle to build a business or create a sales pipeline or, you know, drive new leads consistently anyway, because at best, you're going to be constantly reinventing the wheel. But at worst, none of your marketing or none of your sales messages are ever going to really land with anybody because you're not specific enough and people ex expect that level of specificity now because everything that's hitting us you know we're not reading magazines 
and seeing articles that are generically written to anybody who happened mm -hmm. to have bought the Sunday Times. We are seeing things that are following you or me or one subset of you around the internet, and they're hitting us with these really specific messages. So you can't afford to be generic. You can't afford to not be focused. And so this clarity um, just is everything. And as I say, people struggle. They really struggle with it, you know. Um, and, and, and yet when we do the research with people you find that people spend when you actually get there and get down to this is what you should be doing to get the results people spend minute amounts of time on that and huge amounts of time on other things and it's funny actually you mentioned a minute ago um uh, multitasking and of course multitasking has been completely and utterly neurologically debunked mm -hmm. it's absolute rubbish I, I remember the guys who did the research basically concluded that people who um people who multitask are just a little bit worse at everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I always say. Multitasking is really doing a lot of things badly at once. Um, you could move and, from... And, yeah, sorry, go on. No, no, I was going to say, and the people probably doing the research uh, on multitasking, I mean, they had to focus on that research, didn't they? Not do other... Well, they weren't doing five other pieces of research at the same time. It came <laughs> out of computer stuff, because but uh, and even computers, what they do is they move from one task to another. So what happens is you can't really do two things at the time. I mean, you can breathe and do something because you're not in control of one, but you can't... You know, I can't talk and write different things at the mm -hmm. same time. I've got to move very quickly between one and the other. And there's always a lag time on each one, and it just makes you completely and utterly ineffective. It also uses willpower to move backwards and forwards. And what you need to do is get that focus you know work out what you need to be doing get it into your diary get it focused put all every single bit of your energy you've got you know i meet so many sales people sales leaders who are distracted i mean you you, you say to a sales leader or a, or a managing director so you know what's the most important thing they say what, what do you really want to achieve what's the one thing um i want to grow the business so what's the one mm. thing you need to do to grow the business well um I need to, do you know what it is? I'm running everything and I need a more empowered team to step up and lead beneath me. Okay, great. What's the one thing you need to do to create that team? And, and anyway, they'll come down to, often, not always, but they'll come down to something like, well, I need to do one-to-one -one coaching with them uh, on a regular basis to really bring them up to that level. Uh, so they commit to that and they go away and they sell you what they're going to do and you come back however much later and you say, so how did you get on? Uh, I haven't done it. So out of interest, what is it that you've been doing that is more important than the most important thing you told me you needed to do? Mm -hmm. Because when it's worded that way, it's you just got, because that's what people do. They say, this is the most important thing and this is what I need to do. And then they do other things. And you're like, but what was it you were doing? I was busy doing what? And I think that's the conversation you've got to have with yourself. And you've got to use every single ounce of your energy to make whatever it is you need to do into habit. That's the key yeah. thing. Get yourself doing that. And whether that's, you know, the, the 5 a.m. club and doing it first in the morning, or whether that's diarizing it, or whether that's sitting down with other people and using them to help you, whatever, whether it is getting a buddy, whatever it is, do what you need to do to make sure that happens whatever it is whether it's you're a salesperson and it's yeah. prospecting whether you're a business owner and it's uh you know putting out consistent messages in the media it doesn't really matter what it is but whatever it is it's the same at home with your kids mm -hmm. you know people say to me again often when you get into the conversations oh i don't have great time with my kids i need to do whatever and you ask them what they need to do and they'll say oh i need to get home earlier one night a week or yeah. i need to make football practice or whatever it is mm -hmm. then make it you know make that time and do it it's down to you it's your time yeah, well, you know, we're really good at uh, at feeling great about ourselves because we said we're going to do something. It's uh, and then you know that that's good enough. We don't actually have to execute on it. But it's interesting what you just said there about you know the consistency part because, for instance, you know you mentioned you mentioned the coaching piece, right? So if I'm a, if I'm a salesperson and you're my sales leader and you're and you say okay, I'm going to coach you know I'm coaching is important. I'm going to get you up to stand. But and you put a you put a coaching call on my calendar once a week. But sometimes you show up, sometimes you cancel it. Sometimes you come, you're unprepared. You just you know we're just having a chat. The message you're sending me is that well, it's not really that important. Um, and there, the, and immediately you've just undermined what you're trying to do. Well, and and then and, and in that scenario, that leader turns round to the consultant and says. Yeah. Uh, well, I tried it, but it didn't really get the results that I wanted. And, and, and they blame the trying. They don't go, 
well, I tried it, but I didn't do it properly. And that's why it failed. It was all down to me. I need to do it properly. No one ever says that. But that is the reason. You know, you're absolutely right. Spot on. You, the message you send, if that's the most important thing to, that you believe, you've got to convey to them that it's the most important thing. And as soon as you cancel the most important thing in their heads, they just go, oh, it's just John uh, on another one of his. He's been on a course and he thinks this is a good idea. He'll have forgotten it by this time next week. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going, you know, oh, it's initiative du jour. Don't worry, this will pass as well, just like all the other ones did. True. <laughs> so true. Yeah. And and it's a and I think and I think that's the one of the hardest parts of what you talk about. I mean, the you know, you get the conviction, the clarity, but the consistency is one of the hardest parts because like you say, sometimes the consistency, it's it's doing it's doing the routine or rote things, but it's doing them consistently. And and sometimes the minute we get something that's repetitive and consistent we go well that's boring i'm not going to do that anymore and um, when reality that's the foundation for your success mm. yeah uh, it was just one thing it was interesting um uh you know kobe bryant you know the ba the basketball player he used to go even though like he was the best player at the time like, he used to go to the he used to be first in the gym and he'd be there like 5 a.m or 6 a.m in the morning and he would be practicing not trick shots not big trick shots the most fundamental basketball. Uh, he would be just practicing the same stuff he would have practiced when he was a kid, when he was in high school, just the fundamentals over and over again, because he knew that making sure the fundamentals were in place was the key to being able to do all this fancy stuff and, you know, be a superstar. And I think people forget about the, how the power in fundamentals. Yeah, we're, well, you're, you're on one of my core uh, drum banging... <laughs> Things that, uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've, you know, the, the books you see behind me are a tenth of the books behind me, probably not even that. And I, I've read all of them and I love, I love the complex stuff. I love it. I love the complex language stuff. I would love to be teaching that all of the time. Um, and, and I could, I suppose. But actually, it's not what makes the difference. You're quite right. What makes the difference is doing the, the, the basics really, really well. And, and I do have a theory. You know, you can't teach this for 20 years without a theory. And my theory is this, and it's only a theory. Um, some of the basics are so simple that when somebody tells us them, we just understand it straight away. So our conscious sort of neocortex brain goes, yeah, got it. Um, but because of that, we never practice it. And if we don't practice it, it's a technique we know, not a skill we own. So when we come under pressure, we just don't do it. I mean, a great example would be salespeople and closed and open questions. They all know. And yet when you put them under pressure, that you know they're in a difficult situation, so many ask closed question after closed question after closed question. And, 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 and it's because they've never practiced. And, and you're right. I think they people perceive it's boring and they want to move on and do the advanced stuff. And yet, I mean, I'll give you another example from salespeople. We used to run. I mean, it's a long time ago. I've not taught this for mm -hmm. 10 years now, but I used to teach sort of 15 years or so again, quite a lot of cold calling. And um, we used to run quite a successful cold calling open session called No Fear Cold Calling. We used to get thousands of people a year and their bosses would pay and they would come along. And we gradually simplified it and simplified it and simplified it and simplified it. And give or take, I worked out that the biggest win, the biggest win I could get from people coming on the program <laughs> was that they went back and they actually made some calls. <laughs> if I could improve their skill level, that was great. If I could improve their objection handling, that was fabulous. But actually, by a margin, the biggest problem was they just didn't make any or enough calls. So we did loads of stuff around motivation and mindset and structuring the call and diarising and, and consistency. All that the, it was the, kind of at the genesis of the kind of the IM10 stuff. And I just thought, well, this is ridiculous, but it is the big problem. You know, so many salespeople go, I, I've got a problem with... Um, you know, my sales process or my negotiation mm. or holding a high price or it's this and that. And then you go, okay, show me, show me what you've got going on. And you go, is that it? And they've got, you, that is not enough. For, there's not enough activity there. So the big problem is activity, but the activity is so simple, they won't focus on doing it. Likewise, you know, they go, oh, cold call's a cold call. I don't want to practice it. Well, you yeah. need to. Questioning is simple. I get it. Yeah, but can you do it? You know, oh, coaching's simple. Listening's easy. Yeah, but do you actually do it properly? That's the thing. And I think um, 
I, I have this theory that the people who get paid a lot of money add huge value and incredibly successful major on the really simple things that abs- mm-hmm. they often eschew the, the, the more complicated stuff. You know, if you go to the more complicated books up there, I've got things that are like a thousand thousand pages 500 pages things that i i read 10 pages i mean there's one i could name but i won't because i don't want to you know name something but i got 10 pages in and i went and i consider myself quite clever and i got 10 pages in and i thought why am i just read i I read it but it's just not what and and yet i don't believe that book's hardly sold any copies because that's not what makes the difference what makes the difference is doing that simple stuff really well and, mm-hmm. and you're right i think people overcomplicate, and i think this achieving in 90 days is simplify it right down what's the one goal you want to achieve why is that important to you what do you need to do to achieve it how are you going to hold yourself to action that is very very simple but in essence if you were to do that you'd smash it yeah and and the reality is unfortunately simple doesn't always equate to easy and as you said because you have to hold yourself accountable and you have to be disciplined and just one interesting anecdote to to add to what you said um you know when i was running a sales uh, a sales consultancy a global sales consultancy one of the things that we always said if you want a leading indicator of success when we train people is call planning right simple one page call plan do your call plan before and you would go back uh, and review later and that was the one thing you would look at and sort of they would say oh we're not sure this is working we say well let's look at the call planners uh, well some of them are doing it some of them aren't and some of them are doing it some of the time and on and you're just saying yeah there you go there's a fundamental plan your call yep yep totally Totally. So nothing simple. More, nothing more complicated than that actually plan, you know, and, and all those silly phrases, all those silly sayings actually are true. Like, you know, fail to plan, plan to fail, all of that good stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, um, listen, Gavin, this has been fantastic. All of Gavin's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. Well, I, I, I focus on helping people uh, raise their performance, build high performance teams and helping individuals, particularly CEOs and MDs to get the results uh, they want in their business. Uh, you wouldn't be surprised to hear that that's helping them build conviction, get clarity and create consistency using the fourth one, which is power of community and the people surrounding you because it's that support that you need so if anybody wants there's loads of free stuff on the website and that just bob along to im10.com and uh, get whatever you want and if you've got something to reach out to me about i'd be delighted to speak to anyone yeah fantastic and as i said all of those links will be below this video all right my name is john golden sales pop online sales magazine pipeliner crm i will see you all for another interview really soon thank you